we're doing today. That's what we're doing today. Other angles. Okay, because we've talked about central angles, which means that their vertex lies on what? Center. The center of the circle, and its measure is exactly equal to the arc it intercepts. Inscribed angles are equal to half of the arc that they intercept. Well, today we're going to talk about other angles where the vertex is not on the circle. It's not on the center of the circle. It may be inside the circle somewhere or outside the circle somewhere. And how do we find the measures of those angles? But what if, okay, like there's a circle and there's an angle, but the vertex is still touching the circle, but like the angle is out here. Does that make sense? Like the circle's up here, and the angle's like this, but the vertex is still touching the circle, but still inscribed. I mean, uh, what am I saying? The no. vertex is still touching. Um, no. That's, like, weird. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that would be called. Do we enjoy the zone for stone and madness? Excuse me? It's talking in English. It's not in, like, my silence. We need to write this down. Yes. Okay, the first ones that we're going to look at is what if two chords are crossing inside of a circle, which they have to because chords are found inside of a circle. All right, and the vertex of the angles formed, because there are four angles formed there by those two chords. There's two pairs of vertical angles, okay? So we know that two angles equal each other and two more angles equal each other, where those arcs, excuse me, where those chord cross each other. But if the measure of an angle formed by two chords intersecting inside a circle, it is equal to half of the sum of the two intercepted arcs. Okay, the two formulas we're going to learn today are exactly the same, except one has a plus sign and one has a minus sign. If the angles are formed inside the circle, we are adding the two arcs that are included inside those angles. Okay, so if we're talking in this case about angle number one, well, we're going to use this picture in a second to prove why this is true. That's the measure of the arcs. Okay. If we're talking about the measure of angle one, we automatically know that it's equal to this angle. Good thing is going to be capital B. Because they're vertical. All right? Now, which two arcs are formed or intersected by these two angles? DB and AC. DB and AC. Okay? Here and here. So the measure of either one of these angles is equal to half of these two arcs added together. Wait, I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove it to you in the next slide. Okay? So, I want you to write, draw this picture and we're going to write down this proof. But before you write it down, I want to walk you through it. Alright? Let's just get the picture. <clears throat> in this picture, you have angle one which is formed by two intersecting chords. And you have a line or another chord connecting points A and D, which forms a triangle. And two angles in that triangle are angle three and angle two. Now, to follow along the proof, we have to understand and recall this fact from earlier when we were dealing with triangles. The exterior angle of a triangle is equal, equal to to the the two other remote it's equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. And this is why. Let's just pick a measure for this angle here in the triangle. Let's say it was 100 degrees. Angle 2 plus 3 have to add up to what? 180. No, angle 2 plus 3 have to add up to 80. Mm -hmm. Just 2 and 3. Because they have to make the difference of the 180. Yeah. Well, angle 1 must also be 80 because it finishes off this straight angle. So angle 1 is equal to angle 2 plus 3. All right, so this is our first statement in our proof, and our reason is because the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. All right? Now in section 9.5, 
we learned that angle 2 and angle 3, which are both, what kind of angles if their vertex lies in the circle? Inscribed angles. The measure of angle 2 is equal to 1 half of the arc that angle 2 intercepts. Well, which arc does angle 2 intercept? Arc AC. Arc AC. So angle 2 is equal to half of arc AC. And angle 3 is equal to half of arc. Well, duh, that's something I already learned. Deep, right, but we're proving the new theorem. Okay? So follow me along now. If angle 1 is equal to angle 2, <coughs> and angle 2 is equal to half the measure of arc AC, could I substitute this yeah. into this? And that's what's done here. Plus the measure of angle 3. And angle 3 equals this. So through substitution, I've come up with that equation. Now how could I get from this second to last line to this last line? Substitution. Do no. you like the opposite of distributing? I factored out one half oh. from each of the terms. Okay, both of those terms were being multiplied by one half, so I factored out a one half. Leaving me with the measure of the arc plus the measure of the arc. And so that's the proof to show why that is true. Okay? So don't just take it from my word. There's a reason why. Wait, I think it was Can you explain it by drawing? Okay. Angle 2 is inscribed, yeah. and it creates arc AC. So it's equal to half of that arc. Let's just say arc AC is equal to 80 degrees. So angle 2 is what? 40. All right? Angle 3 forms this arc. Let's say this arc is 30 degrees. Angle 3 is half of 30, right? OK. So angle 3 plus 2 add up to what? 55. Well, isn't angle 1 equal to these two added together? Yeah. So angle 1 is 55. So by using this concept, we can say, well, without going through all that monkey shine, the measure of angle 1 is simply add up these two arcs and then take half of them. But what? Oh, oh, okay. Because it's equal to 2 and 3, that's why. Right, because it's equal to 2 and 3. Because it's equal to 2 and 3. Because of the triangle, yeah. oh, Thingy. whatever. Thingy wingy. Remote. Okay, now here's our second one. This, the, this last one, the angles were inside the circle. Now we're talking about angles that are going to be outside. outside the circle. The angle can be formed by secants, by two tangents, or by a secant and a tangent. And you will notice that the formula is very similar to the last one, except instead of adding the measure of the two arcs, subtract them. this time we're subtracting. Some of you are going to be able to simply do this in your head. Some of you might actually have to write it down. I don't care how you do it, just so you don't find it off your neighbor's paper. This is just the same thing except the Right. Yeah. So when the angles are inside the circle, you add the arcs. When the angle formed is outside the circle, you subtract the arcs. And I've got three pictures to show the three different types of angles that can be formed. Which arc do you have to subtract first? Does it matter? The bigger one minus the smaller one. Because we're looking for measures and it's always got to be positive. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> 